guys, just like that, I am back with another portable Clint. Guys, my next guest is one of the funniest and funnest people to watch a Super Bowl with. <laughs> I've done it many times with this gentleman, and I love this dude with all my heart. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Derek Waters. Oh, Whoa. Thanks, Clint. Derek Thank Waters. You. I'm glad to be portable with you. Yeah, Thank dude, you. it's so good this to be good. portable with you, I man. I love this. Dude, it loves you. We got to do more Super Bowl parties. Derek, we truly do, man. I only do them once a year. I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> see, see my point? Okay. Uh, Derek, mm -hmm. I started this portable Clint on April 2nd. Which year? Of this year. <laughs> <laughs> so for the past two and a half months I've been doing this, and every time I tell people what I'm doing, the first thing they say is, well, you should get Derek Waters. Really? You should get Derek Waters. Oh, you're, but you're going to do Derek Waters, right? Mm -hmm. Literally about a hundred times I've been asked that question. Was Nobody that your mom? Else, or my mom my Leslie, Kevin, Butch, my brother, every, my whole family. My mom. Yeah, your yeah. mom. Hey. <laughs> All right, Derek Waters. Well, thank you for having me. Dude, my pleasure. I've been, I've been waiting. I've yeah, been you waiting. have. You've been out of town. Yeah. So you would have done this sooner. Thank you. I had to come up with a good story. You're right. Exactly. All right, Derek. Mm -hmm. Here we go, dude. Are you ready? Here we are. When did you start thinking about moving to Los Angeles, California? Wow. Um, I started thinking about it when I was, I knew what I wanted to do when I was a kid, but I didn't know I wanted, well, no, sorry, I want to give you the real story. Uh, 1987, my okay. parents, well, my grandparents took me out here to, uh, see my uncle and, uh, he lived in Pasadena. Pasadena, uh, California? Yeah, Pasadena, California. But they took me to Universal Studios, and I knew when I saw that tour guide, I'm like, that's what, I want to do that. And I was like, when I saw, like, uh, those, uh, the houses on the New York Street and then saw that there was nothing behind them, yes. I was just like, wow. And I remember I just kept asking my grandparents, like, is that real? Is that real? Is that real? <laughs> and being so excited, and they're like, no. I was like, whoa. And so I was obsessed with it and I always thought I would come out here. But when I was in high school, I took a workshop out here called Media Workshop. And it was, <laughs> this is funny, <laughs> at UCLA. And um, I remember like each, each day you'd go to like a different type of media place and learn about it. So we would learn like- This about, is a cool to, place, man. Yeah, LA Times, you go to the LA Times, you go like see a taping of a show. I remember I saw the, not the pilot, but the first episode of uh, that 70s show tape, not to date Which myself. one was it? Uh, the second one. Hey buddy, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> uh, good to see you, Kyle. Okay, which, which 70s shows was it? Uh, it was the first one. But which one? The Topher. I don't remember the story of mine, Paul. I was joking, like that '70s show. Never mind. I oh. was being bored. Go oh, ahead. okay. <laughs> it wasn't in the '70s, you did. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, mm. So yeah, I think the the yeah. So I did this workshop, and I remember the the main guy who like was in charge it was this. I don't want to say his name, but he like really made himself look like whoa. This is who to impress. You know, like, this guy would be like, you know, I've been out here for all these years. Like, this is what you guys got to do, blah, blah, blah. You know, really the cult leader sure. of this group. <laughs> the last day, there's a talent show. And we're all, like, excited. Like, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? He's like, we're all trying to be actors, you know. Like, we're, we all did these, like, serious monologues. And he comes out, no joke, called, like, with a red nose and goes, Hello, I'm Kuzu the Club. <laughs> and we all just looked at each other and realized we were just scammed by Kuzu the Clown. <laughs> like, we thought this guy was like Spielberg. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Like, really bad clown jokes. Anyway, so I knew so I wanted like the to... the facades at Universal, right? It's something yeah. real up front, but nothing in the back. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, I did that, and then, I, but I knew I wanted to live out here. I just didn't know how to get here. Okay, so that was in 87. 87, right? Wait, what year was that? Clint, what I was, year was born that? in 79. 
Wait, but what year did you say you came out here to visit? When I was a kid. Okay, okay that year? was 87. That's but, what I was but saying. But then I did this media workshop okay. years later when okay. I was like 17, sorry. Now, when you and went... And 70 show. <laughs> <laughs> when you did the 70 show, did you tell them that you were on the 80s show? No, well, I hadn't yet. <laughs> Okay. But that was, but I did. I was on the, that '80s yeah, show, yeah, you and were. just I get Which asked one? this a lot. <laughs> Go ahead. I get asked to say my line a lot. Do you I'll, really I'll, at the '80s show? No, like at the farmers market when I run into people, <laughs> they'll ask me to do it. Um, I don't mind. Ready? Yeah. <clears throat> Can you say, "May I help you"? May I help you? Do you have any kaja goo goo? <laughs> Oh, Derek, I can still see works. you. Yes, still works. That was works. customer number one. Okay. Was it I really customer number one? Yeah. Most of my resume is an occupation before <laughs> a number. <laughs> or after. Yeah, Derek, that's mine. That's my life, too. Still, still today. Okay, Derek. Okay, so you get... Okay, when do you, when do you start packing the car to move to Los Angeles? Because I feel like you did some other things before yeah, you got you out know, of here. I yeah. went to Toronto. After Show I off. Go ahead. Let us hear about <laughs> it. Raptors. After I graduated high school, I did community college just for a little bit because my parents were like, just try it. And I knew I hated school, but I wanted to make them happy. And so uh, I took English and acting. In Canada? No. Jesus. Sorry. In Baltimore. I did community college in Baltimore. And then I went to Canada to study Second City. Okay, why did you choose Canada to study Second City? I know Good that's question. where the birth is, right? No, the birth is in Second, obviously in Chicago. In Chicago, right? But there's a big connection in Canada, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, why well, Canada? Like SCTV. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's where I'm getting. I went to Chicago for two days and Toronto for two days and hung out with people to see what it was like and. I didn't know anything, and Chicago just seemed like this is where you should know your stuff. And so I thought I should go. I should. Toronto was more open to people like, for starting out. Sure. And I didn't know anything. <laughs> really, didn't know anything. And so I I lived in a house, a room in a house for six months. Who's, whose house did you move into? I don't know. It was like someone owned a house and then rented out the rooms. And you lived by people. yourself? Yeah on a couch it was the best though i never lived alone it was so much fun Dude. the internet had just come out this is 99 baby i saw the red hot chili peppers perform on my street on my birthday really? 99 yeah young street Derek, get in here i a lived in bit. cabbage town yeah oh sorry it's all right <clears throat> look at that dude you live in cabbage town is that what that you said that was the name of it yeah it was isabella and <clears throat> sherborne that's the neighborhood Okay, Derek, before we continue on, I, here's what, something I've always admired about you. You have a very, you have a very great drive about you. you. Whenever you know you like something or want something, you go for it. Is that true? Yes. That's what I've noticed about you. Thanks, Carl. Okay. I don't always get it, but I go for it. But you do go for it. I drive. So you go to Canada, spend six months in a room in a house. Mm -hmm. And then... And then you go, okay, this is great and all, because I never lived by myself, but you start thinking, hey, it's time to go to L.A.? What are you mm -hmm. thinking? Well, uh, I got kicked out for being an illegal alien. What? Yeah. Okay. But I have to jump ahead for one second, only because my, one of my best stories of moving to L.A. was I met with a manager once and told him that story that I, I was in Toronto for a little bit and then I got kicked out for being an illegal alien. And I started working for my father. He's like, wait, 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 wait. When you're with me, you got to put jokes in your story, okay? <laughs> so who was who said this? This is uh, funny. I like this guy already. <laughs> wait, wait, this lady, hang on. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, Every plate. Okay, go uh, ahead, dude. The um, but he's like, when you're with me, you got to put a jokes in your story. So when you got kicked out of Toronto for being a legal alien, say it more like this. I got kicked out of Toronto for being an illegal alien. I mean, me. Can you believe that? <laughs> of all people. <laughs> the person you just met. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so, then I went back and worked for my father, uh, who has a tire supply uh, store. What's the, the name of it? The Waters Company. Sure. And uh, you have everything hats, to do you have with to tire parts except for tires. Yeah, I got... I have pens, I got notepads, yeah. 
Um, but I would put wheel, I would collect wheel weights and put them in boxes for my dad. Okay. It, but I was thinking about that drive. I was thinking about, I was, I was listening to Bob Seger, Hollywood Nights Amen, constantly. Brother. Amen, Driving my 96 Grand Am GT, which I did embarrassingly call the Hollywood Night <laughs> when I moved out here. Okay. And, uh, so, um, I just decided I, I have to live here, so I just towed my Pontiac Grand Am. No. Is uh, is there is the is Chris Farley an anchor to all of this oh, yeah. at this point? Oh yeah. Well, I mean that if, the question was like comedy. I knew it then. I knew it. I loved Chris Farley, and I, but when he died, that was when I was like, no, I no, I have to do this now. Like I, it was, it was so. It's still sad. The thing about I went to his grave. This is a good story. Right after I remember this, I took a bus. From, uh, I was seeing a friend in uh, Wisconsin, took a bus. How to, old were Duluth. you? How old? Uh, he died in 97, so I was 18. 18 years old, jumping on a bus to go yeah. to a gravesite. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, and Derek. My, and my grandmother had map quested where the grave <laughs> was. I just remembered that. But we made one mistake. What was that? We didn't know where the grave was going to be. <laughs> and it was probably two feet of snow in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh. And uh, I was just like, oh, I got it. I'm gonna, I gotta find it. And so I finally saw this Farley plaque. I uh, got down on my knees, say what, said what I wanted to say. And then as I was walking away, I just thought, I felt something was off. I was just like, what if I find out that wasn't his grave? Like, so I went in and asked. I was like, do you guys know where Chris Farley's grave is? And they're like, oh, he's not buried. He's in the mausoleum. And I was like, oh my God. If I would have come all this way, yeah, and uh, so I, so you really I, knew I told something his wasn't right. I love them. Really? Well, oh, that's yeah. what <laughs> they were on that '70s show, <laughs> <laughs> or that '50s show. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so yeah, he was in the mausoleum, and it was. Uh, I don't know. There's just. Did you go see him there? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Right. I never been in one of you. Uh, I don't think so. It's really nice. I, I think I have. It. I think I have. I think I Penrod Dennis, Chris Dennis's dad, is yeah. buried in one. Okay. Well, not buried. Well, yeah, you know whatever. Yeah, you know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, he's in the tomb. Yes, thank you. Great. Okay, so you do that. Mm -hmm. You put you. Did you do you tell Chris Farley that you're going to go out to Hollywood in a you know in a prayful way? I think I prayed to him and just said thank you. I love you, and I'm going to do this, and I hope you come with me. I think that's. Still, I always think about, man, I would have loved to have met him. A man, I don't know. But sometimes I'll hear a song or I'll hear something and I'm like, oh, man. I always get a sign like, oh, maybe that's Farley. I get signs like that from John Belushi. Really? Yeah, I really do. I'm not just saying that. Hey, guys, look at this. Derek even has a little <laughs> Chris Farley pin. No, look, at that. look at that. All right. So you get out to Los Angeles. When do you roll into town? What day? M well, my... March 1st is when it rent started, 2000. Okay. But I think I came in like the 27th. <clears throat> is this the... Uh, Feb, I'm sorry, February 27th of 2000. Mm -hmm. Is this the apartment that I met you at? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I loved your apartment because I remember coming over to your place one time and you had a lawn chair. I don't know. I, I'm going to say yeah, a lawn chair. It was. A lawn chair in front of a television set, but the television set, you could set it on the channel that you oh see my. the people walking into your apartment. And you were doing play by play like you were watching a football game. Oh, no, not this guy again. Oh, here comes this guy walking up. Oh, dude, change your shorts, don't man. Let <laughs> yeah, don't let him in. That was your big bet, I, I think. I, I don't know. I loved it. I was Derek. so impressed that, like, this place is so true but i had a security camera yeah it was really great it yeah. was your own security camera yeah i was in there 11 years Clint. i loved that place while you were <laughs> on a view. network show mm. on a primetime network show you were still living there yeah look yeah. at you i had to yeah it was rent control 700 dollars a month you can't beat that mm -mm. okay but it was right next to the chinese theater man's chinese theater yeah. i mean it was like when you're 20 it's cool and you're like, oh, I thought that's where you're supposed to be. Yeah. And like, I think the, definitely the first week I stepped in human shit, and I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, seven hundred bucks. 
<laughs> rent control. <laughs> but okay. yeah, no, sorry. Okay, no, it's all good. Um, so you move in. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you do to, 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 to break into Hollywood? Well, I, I just remembered this. I was like, I'm going to save my money. I got a Java Tower video. I remember I'm, seeing him working at Tower. I'm going to walk everywhere. I'm not going to use gas. I'm going to walk everywhere. And I remember my first night, second or first or second night, I walked to the comedy store. And I was like, this is so cool. It's like an hour and a half walk from my Hollywood place. But I was just $700. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just looking. Oh, wow. That's a saddle ranch. Oh, wow. Just being on the Sunset Strip was so surreal. You know, like Disney World for the first time. And then I got to the comedy store and uh, they said, you can't come in. And I was like, why? And they're like, you're not 21. And uh, so I walked back home. That was a three hour trip. <laughs> it was. <laughs> They're not much. Yeah, yeah. How old were you, Derek? 20. When do you turn 21 at that time? July 30th. So February? Every year. Every year? <laughs> July 30th. <laughs> yeah, no, I came in March and so I, yeah. I so turned. you just had a couple of months to wait. Yeah, I was fine. So did yeah. you So did you wait to go back in there when you were yeah. 21? I think it like haunted me and I didn't go for a really long time. <laughs> I was so embarrassed that I walked so long. <laughs> Almost getting to the top of Everest. <laughs> mm, sorry, folks. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. So yeah, tell me sorry. what you start doing for your career oh, yeah. to get something going. So my going. career was um, Second City. Second City, dude. I mean, we always say it, but it really was the best decision we all made because we didn't realize it. But anytime I meet someone that's first starting out, I always say, find your crew. Like, don't be with the successful people. Be with the people that are at the same level as you, and you'll help each other. Yeah. Right? And that's we didn't purposely do that. Yeah. That just happened. Yep. And I think when you're taking classes, right. you're like admitting like you want help, and like you're being vulnerable, and like I don't know. I know you had been out here longer, well, and you took a little break, and then started taking classes right well no what happened was I, I had been working a lot commercially and then I had my first dry spill I didn't book for six months and to me at that time that was a long dry spill and I was freaking out yeah so I went to Second City and I always met friends but I never followed through with friends that I met on a set for some reason I don't know why but when I met you guys the crew you uh, and Craig and all the other guys things clicked yeah like yeah. things were different I know yeah I don't know how to describe it except it was just like finding your friends yeah finding your crew and we all just and we all just came together perfectly mm -hmm. there was no like I hate that dude I hate that dude it was like a nice fit yeah yeah <clears throat> and I remember going out I remember meeting you I met you at Second City first did I meet you at Second City first or did I meet you when you worked at Tower Video I remember on my lunch break passing you with a whole bunch of rowdy <laughs> people that I know I, I was like, I've seen that guy at Second City and I just like waved and you're like, hey brother. But we didn't, I don't think we knew each other until, now I'm remembering, when the shows at Second City used to be done at the Improv. Yes. And we were, Those were we would fun. all hang out there. Weren't all the shows on Sundays? And then like, cause yep. we, th yeah. Now Level I'm four like, or oh, five that makes and, sense. Yeah. The improv isn't like open in the morning like our shows were like at 10 a.m yeah <laughs> when you're first starting with a two beer minimum you don't realize this is great what at the improv i have spent 50 dollars to perform great all right derek scoot on up dude i just Sorry. want everybody to hear you Sorry. and see you oh yeah beautifully. my voice no right. it's all good okay so we start working we start ha -ha fresh and that's ha -ha. it's spelled like haja but it uh, looks like Baja Fresh. Baja Fresh, that was great. Yeah. The greatest crew, greatest crew. Can we give a shout out to Dodd Bates? Yes, Don, remember, where is Dodd, where is Dodd did our likes, and I remember, oh, I'm sorry, what's your name? Dodd, it's God with a D. <laughs> <laughs> where is Dodd these days? I haven't heard from him. Uh, he was always a good to us. He, he was really he, good he to played, us. He played with us. Yes, he just we wasn't were, the lighting guy, he no, played with like, us. He would turn the lights off and at times that were like, oh, that was better. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It, it really felt like a good, it was a band. Okay, so we all start performing together. We all start hanging out and having a great time. And then we all get hooked up. We're with Chris Dennis. Thanks to you. Well, that's not why I'm bringing it up. So we're all with Chris Dennis. Oh, yeah. And then you book your first commercial 
which was for it was for a website. I'm trying to remember. Mm -hmm. I, I knew I know this, so I can't think of the name. Do you it's remember okay. the name? Questia. Questia. Does that change your life? That one. Yeah. I feel like it did so many things for a first commercial, didn't it? Didn't well, it? Taff hardly me. Okay. That's a name drop. Okay. And I got money. And I think it was I've a print gig. Confidence. It was print, and it was on during March Madness. Yes. And uh, it was basically Google. Before Google, it was the idea of like the commercial was just me sweating. Like, are you stressed out? Like, no fear. Now you have Questia, where you can read every book in your computer. That yes. was it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, they flew me to Dallas, Texas, which I know you're from Corpus, but it made me happy. You know, like, I, I'm going to get a Whataburger. Yes. Yes. And I felt, I, I don't know. I think just even getting a job, no matter what it does, it gives you confidence. Yeah. I remember this kind of like changing things. I changed. You, you did change. You did the Hollywood <laughs> change. Okay. Thank God. So, and then, I, we don't have to go through each job. No, I'm no, just no, trying no, to get yeah, to yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you have a, when do you do the Nicorette commercial? Oh my gosh. Was there a lot of time between the two? No, but I just remember I smoked at the time. <laughs> and I remember like the people looking at me and I'm like, it works. <laughs> That's funny. I completely man. forgot about the yeah. commercial. Wow. Yeah, way to go, man. This is my dad's song. I love a rainy, rainy night. night. That's a good sings. song. Yeah. Um, so when do I get the, what, what did you Okay, ask? well, no, okay, so you start doing commercials, but yeah. then you're, and then you get, how do you get a theatrical agent oh, for right. them to start sending you out? Yeah, so I did a play with the late, great Jim Zulovic, who had seen me at Second City, and um, this woman came up to me and just said, I really liked what you did, are you doing anything else? That I can see like you perform. I said, Is that oh. your new manager that you're about to say? Well, wait a second. Oh, well, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, me. Can you believe that? Okay, go. Um, so I'm excited about this about this turn. That's think, a reason. I think why. I, I did it in the wrong order, but she said I would love to see you perform. What are you, are you doing? Anything where I can see something that you've written? I said, Oh, me and my friend Craig wrote this show um, called Rob Sir Carl's at uh, Second City, it's basically me and my friends just being like, trying to be like Bob and David, and she's like, oh, that's funny, because my husband's Bob Odenkirk. Wait, Bob and David of, of Mr. what show? show? Mr. Show, and yes. which was your favorite show, favorite. correct? Best comedy show ever made. And you were a fan of this before, before even moving out to Los Angeles? Mm -hmm. Well, a little bit. I knew a little bit about it in Toronto, but I didn't have HBO growing up, and I saw tapes of it in Toronto, but then here, when I met Craig, like in our writing class, and we would share these, Amy Seeley would show us these tapes, and I loved him. So, uh, finding out about this, but before that night of meeting uh, Naomi Odenkirk's her name, Craig, who I was writing it with, is living with Bob's uh, sister-in-law. That I didn't know so, that Bob yeah. Odenkirk's sister-in-law. Right. And we got their phone number, Bob and Naomi's phone number, and used to prank call them with like singing Mr. Show stuff. And so when she told me that uh, that her husband's Bob, I was like, well then the guy I do the show with is living with your sister. It was just one of those moments where I always feel like just when you think things are bad, you get little signs that are just like, because I do believe in good signs and bad signs that like, if you keep seeing go, go. And if you keep seeing stop, you should stop. Right, you know? right, right. Um, but that one was just so big. And so I, she was like, I don't, I think you're a little green, which I still hate that phrase. Me too, I was oh, told the same me, thing. remind me, I got a good green story later. Okay. Um, but uh, she put me out for an audition to see how I did, Allison Jones and Spin City, and I, again, everyone, did play Bungie. <laughs> My name was Bungie. I helped Charlie Sheen get high, and uh, unfortunately got arrested that night. I still have the fake uh, joint that I have with Charlie Sheen. Really? Yeah. Okay. And was the nicest guy. The, okay. Now, this is a, this is an important job that you that you just booked yeah. for many reasons. I think I'm 20. To you're 22, 23 years old. You, this is your very first book, and you're working with Charlie Sheen, 
which is an awesome guy. I'm, I work with him too. <clears throat> Not to make it about me. Are you the half man? I'm the half Two man. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, so you work on this. Oh, how many days did you get? Three or five? I think one. One day? I think one. But who do you meet on that set? Who You, you meet a connection. Oh, you wow. met a connection there. Clint did homework. Well, but I've always known you. I, I, I'd have to do any homework. I've Tom just known Hertz. you. His name is Tom Hurts. Tom Hurts. And he couldn't have been nicer. He wrote the episode, which, again, I'll bring up. It was called Age Against the Machine. <laughs> okay. Yes, I remember that. And how yeah. do you, how do you, when do you start talking to him on the set? This is very important, guys. Oh, right. That my networking. Yeah, I, it, what, because I know you don't, because. I really don't remember talking much to him. And if I if, because I didn't know enough to be like, oh, that's the writer of the episode. I just was excited to be there and didn't want to mess up and, like, wanted to talk to Charlie Sheen about Major League. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I remember uh, Ted Wass was the director. Okay. And um, at the, like, I, did, I still don't know how to tie tie. You've tried to help me. Sure. Charlie Sheen helped me, like, he was fixing, I think I had a tie for something, but... I was like, thank you so much. This is so weird. It's like Rick Vaughn is putting on... Like, I wanted to be Rick Vaughn growing up. Right. And uh, he's like, God, I'm a million years old. <laughs> and I was like, hey, what's the guy's name? He was like, every time we win, we'll remove a piece. And from, out, from Major League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we yeah. talked about that guy. And then at the end of the day, I was wrapped. And then I just hear, Bungie, Bungie. And I was like, oh my God. And I'm like in ta lost in town hall of the Spin City set. And I just hear Charlie Sheen yelling bungee. And I get to the set and they're all like waiting for me with their arms crossed. And and he goes, do your impression for Ted. Oh, wow. And I was like, that was so nice that he did that. And uh, yeah, it, yeah, that did a lot of confidence for me. And yeah. Okay. That's really cool. So let's put that book in on the side for a second, okay? And we'll get back to this book in a second, all right? What happens after that? What do you do after that? Oh, maybe the, uh, I think it was, that's when I got the sitcom. Okay. I so I remember this, Derek. I remember certain things. You were at home hmm. on a Sunday. You get a phone call on a Sunday from your, I don't know who called you, but they said that they want you to come in tomorrow to read for Mary to the Kellys. Right. Because back I- Back to Kansas. Back to Kansas. That's what it's called. Was. That's what it was called. Yeah. But I remember, I hear so many things happen in Hollywood on a Sunday. Hmm. And I'm like, something mysterious, something magical always brewing when you don't think it's going to brew that day. Because Saturday and Sunday to actors, we hate Saturday and Sundays. Because we can't book a job yeah. that day, but you get a phone call yeah. saying, "Now, do you do you know what I'm talking about here, Derek?" I think I do. Because I'll never forget it. You said you got a phone call on a Sunday mm -hmm. that you had to go read for Married to the Kellys. It's one. Sorry, there's one job before that, and okay. that's what you're remembering. It is it was? Uh, uh, oh my gosh, why am I forgetting? Uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of his name. Swybell, Terry Swybell. Um, to read for his pilot. Okay. At his house on the night of the Emmys. Okay. But what I think with the Sunday thing is, it's like, I think maybe when you're like younger and you haven't like done that, they're like, oh yeah, just grab that guy. He's, you know, we're, we're waiting for our chance. And so I went to the guy's house and auditioned for it in his house on a Sunday and then went to go test for it the next day. And uh, it was... Henry Winkler was going to be the dad. It was Henry Winkler and a couple other actors, but he was the only one I cared about. And I still have never had this happen to me since. Hopefully, never will again. But in the room for testing for network, everyone knows like you sign, you see how much money you would be getting, and I'm flat broke and seeing like, oh my god, I'd be getting all this. It's such a, it's a real mind fudge. And, yeah. Uh, but Henry Winkler was so nice, and in the room they go we're sorry Derek but you're just too green like in the room like usually you hear that the yeah, next day yeah yeah but I was so sad and Henry Winkler I said goodbye to and he's like why are you leaving and I said well they told me I was too green and he put his arm around me and he said 
you know what happens in that room has nothing to do with you, right? And I was like, yeah, he goes, no, look me in the eye and tell me that you know that. It was just, it was really, really sweet. And that is a big awesome. Hug and it was really cool. I love the people who help us out along the way. Yeah. They will never forget those people. And we can't ever forget to repeat the things that we learned from those people. Amen, brother. Because how good that felt. Yep, absolutely. You know, that little time that he took to do that is goes big ways. Yeah. Okay, Derek, just sorry, because I'm we're at the, too no, much. no, you're good. We're at the thirty minute mark. Shit, sorry. <laughs> See how quickly. I talk very slow. See how quick. No, you're good. I just want to say because now we're gonna kind of fast track. I told Clint I don't want to go over thirty. <laughs> I did. Okay, so you book. Should we just stop it? No. And go bar two. No. 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 All right. So you book Married to the Kellys. Yes. Sitcom. Beca yeah. Sitcom because the writer of Spin City remembered you and he created this new show called Married to the Kellys. Mm -hmm. He brought you in specifically. He remembered you. Were you? Were other actors up for this spot or mm -hmm. was it just you? Mm -hmm. Do you remember who else was up for it? This really great actor, Leo Fitzpatrick. And I remember I loved him and, and kids. I, Loved him in storytelling, and I was really excited to meet him. So much so that, like, after we tested, I was like, <laughs> "Do you want to go to Taco Bell?" <laughs> and we're eating Taco Bell, and I get a call, and they're like, "We need you to come back." And I'm so young, and I'm like, "Oh, they want me to come back, but I'm sure they want you to come oh, too." Derek. And he was old enough to know. Uh, he's like, "No, you just go." And Where were you at the Taco Bell across the street from Warner Brothers? Mm -hmm. Okay, which is now a hot dog place. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was really. But then I went back and did it one more time, and they got it, and it was so cool. It's, uh, that was how I had to say goodbye to my '96 Grand Am, and got a 2003 Forerunner that I had for ever. Derek, I remember something very specific. I remember you telling me that after you tested, you went home, you turned up the music really loud, and you took your shirt off, and you kind of danced around in the room. I think you were waiting for the phone to ring. Do you remember this at all, Derek? I'll just never forget it, because I, I, I'm always fascinated when people are about to book something mm -hmm. that changes their life. Yeah. Do you remember where you were when you booked it at mm -hmm. all? Okay, well, I remember you telling me you were in your house, dude, waiting for the phone to ring. Your shirt was off. You knew that you did a fantastic job at the at the at the testing of it, and then you booked it. Okay. It's not like I blo blocked that out. Yeah, I apparently just... you did. <clears throat> no. <laughs> okay, Derek, you shoot how many seasons? One. One. Twenty-two episodes. And. I remember, dude, it was... It, TGIF. TGIF. This was the year that they brought TGIF back, mm -hmm. which you were a fan of when you were a kid. Oh, yeah. Full House, and then, Perfect Strangers, yeah, and Family then, Matters. And yeah. then now you get to be a part of that. Yeah. Fantastic. Dreams, yeah. But what could possibly go wrong? Right. I'm just going to decide because I loved it. It Thank was you. great. You, uh, you you met a lot of people on there that you would that you would end up using. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, who, is, who is your love interest on that show? Ashley Johnson. Ashley Johnson. Yeah. Which you ended up bringing, working with later, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you shoot that. That comes to an end. You need to start. You. What do you Sorry, do Sorry, just. I know go it's ahead. going long. But right. You can take as long end, as you want. We can go the long hardest long. thing is like every week you would hear from your friends that you grew up with, like, hey, man, that was so great. Even though the show, like, you know, it was a sitcom, so it wasn't, like, the funniest thing, but, like... I loved it. Getting people that you grew up with, like, and family members calling, like, it just felt so good. And then all that stops is just real hard. And I remember I was at Target, and this guy came up to me, he's like, man, you were on my favorite show. And I was like, thanks, man. He's like, why'd they cancel that? I was like, I don't know. I think, you know, family shows are hard to, like, keep on the air. And he's like, man, what was the name of it? And I was like, oh, it's okay. Nobody remembers it. It was guys like, Married with Children. What's up, Bob Bundy? <laughs> still funny. Yeah, still funny, man. After all these years. And it still happens. I bet. People still really? ask me about Bud Bundy. How often do you get that, Derek? Well, like, the, the place where I get, like, Close, like there's a picture of me, and, I, and every time I come back, I go, How many people as if that was the <laughs> They're like five. Each time <laughs> I get a count of how many more. Wait, where do you buy your clothes? It's a, it's like for short guys. Is it really for short guys? Yeah. 
All right. The short and small. <laughs> I don't okay. want to advertise. So, um, yeah, so. Okay. But then that's, in some weird way, that's where the depression started of like, man, I got to figure my stuff out. I played a weird year on TV, and every audition now I get is like stone looking guy number seven, drunk sounding guy number eight. I could like be bitter about this, or I could be proactive and like prove that I'm not. So I started writing and making shorts and doing more stuff at Second City and more like You were always videos. putting on shows, Derek. You were always putting on shows, which is another sign of me being impressed with you because you were going to get it. Yeah. You were going to get it. And what I love about why you're going to get it, you always needed, for some reason, a kid in a, in a, in a, in a scene or something. And dude, you would always go, hey, do you mind if AJ does this? I'm like, dude, please. Because I want, I want AJ. I remember Gudrun Flaherty told me something. She says, Clint, make sure you let your kids hang out with your friends in this comedy world. Because that's the way I was raised. Wow. We're hanging out with John Candy. I mean, I was like, yeah. So I always remember that. So I, that's the reason why I always, I love it. I love it when you call me to ask if one of my girls are available. Love it. I love you, girls. Um, <clears throat> okay. So you create three or four shows. You did LOL. Yeah. Then 13th grade. 13th grade. Yeah. I made that movie with... Think of that. I am Ozzy. I am Ozzy. I yeah. I remember that, dude. I remember filming in Bel Air or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-seven minutes short. Then, you and Jake Johnson. Mm -hmm. Everybody, a lot of people know this story, but I kind of want to be more specific with yeah. it. Why do you guys rent a hotel room one night? <laughs> we we didn't do that. Yeah, We're, you did. That's a short film. Clint. That oh. Was, <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we did rent it, but we didn't sleep in it. We shot a short Well, yeah, film. you shot a short film. We did a short. I still want to make more of these where it was two guys that were just filming their road trip. Yes. And had hired a film crew to do like this weird road trip. And they like hire a stripper. They like do acid. That's just, yeah, it's really It's weird. really funny. Yeah. Okay. But there's a there's a day that there's a night, yeah. there's a night uh -huh. that you guys start hanging out. Do you remember where you hung out that night? Jake's old apartment, Jake's on Rowena. Old apartment. Why did you meet there that night? We we're unemployed actors, just like, hey, let's have some beers and like make our plan. Like you know those times where you're like, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I don't, I don't have anything next month. Let's just like hang out and maybe we'll think of an idea. But we weren't like writing. We were just hanging out. And we were getting pretty drunk. And I remember Jake was telling me, this, he was trying to convince me that Otis Redding knew he was gonna die when he got on the plane that crashed. And I was like, you know when you're drunk with someone and you don't wanna argue, you're just like, oh, okay, okay. And he was like, no man, I'm serious. Like Otis Redding really knew that he was gonna die on that plane. He looked at his wife and he was like, take care of yourself. I gotta go. And he's like, I know Otis. You gotta go, I'll see you when you come back. No, I'm not coming back. Otis has gotta go. And he was so convincing, trying to convince me, and I just kept picturing Otis Redding behind Jake being like, shaking his head, <laughs> but still moving his lips to what Jake's saying. So I thought, oh, maybe we could shoot that and reenact that story, because that'd be kind of funny. And then at I was at like, this point, are you in your life trying to figure out everything that you're seeing? Are you trying to use it in a sketch of somehow? I'm trying to, because I was doing LOL at UCB, and each month, it was kind of like I did it for a goal for me. Like, every month was a new short to show for people, and then I was like, it will make me proactive of making. So I was just thinking, oh, this could be a cool short. And I thought, oh, if Jake got drunk and talked about Otis, but... Maybe that story it is or isn't true. You don't really know what's a story you can see uh, that you know, so you'll know the joke when people mess up when they're drunk. Right. And so I thought history. And so the original thought was like, oh, if it's like the Drunk History Channel. Yeah, where yeah. somebody's drunk. And I also secretly love watching smart people look really stupid. Amen, brother. That's a yeah. secret reveal of... I think another reason why I wanted to do it was like someone really smart not talking down to me, talking to me, you know? Okay, now that night, are you saying, Jake, 
I think I just thought of something, or you driving home the next day thinking... The next day, like, yeah. Okay. And I think I asked Jake first, and he's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'll be in the reenactment, but I'm not doing that, which is smart, but... Uh, how, do you, how do you think of Mark Gagliardi as the first, very first person... I think I, we, Jeremy and I realized we shot two people that night, and I can't, I don't remember the other person. <laughs> He'll be on this show in a couple of years. I don't remember what his name was. Sorry. How did you hook up with your? How did you hook up with your partner on this? How did you know that you Jer needed? Oh, Jeremy. Oh, we forgot one thing, but it's fine. No, go Jeremy ahead. was the editor for a pilot I did with Bob Odenkirk and Simon Helberg of Ha Ha Fresh, which called was Derek called Derek and Simon. And Simon. Yeah, and so Jeremy was the editor, and uh, we really clicked. And so I was like, oh, I got this idea would you shoot it and edit it? And so we did it and uh, we got Mark really drunk and I said, what's a moment in history you think more people should know about? And he said, Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. And he got So this really was drunk. the very first time that somebody got drunk on, and, and came up with their own uh, topic to talk about. I mean, I had told him, I had asked Mark like the night before. Okay. But that's how the old ones were, where I wouldn't give them anything. I would just ask. So uh, I'm just sitting there genuinely learning, you know? Okay. And, yeah. So you make this. Mm -hmm. And who are the big guys that you get to reenact it? Michael Sarah and Jake Johnson. Ashley Johnson and myself. And when you ask these guys, did everybody just quickly say yes? Or they're like, now wait, now what? I, somebody's going to get drunk and we're reenacting that? I was really lucky that... that I, I had told Michael Sarah about it a while ago. And he said, if you ever do that... I would love to be in it. Because I had the idea, but some people got it, and other people would be like, that sounds like jackass. I'm like, how does it sound like jackass? That's nothing so like I, jackass. I was like, I have to shoot it to prove what the tone was. You know, yeah. like a drunk history channel. Yeah. Okay, so you shoot it, and then how does it get? How does it go viral? Like, what happens? I was, uh, I didn't want to put it on the internet because I was anti like that stuff. I felt like people were watching stuff based on hits and not content. And this was but at the beginning days. Two thousand seven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the beginning of it. And then I was really bored at Christmas with my parents, not because of them. Just wow. <laughs> The, you know, you're just bored sitting around, sure, and then yeah, I yeah. thought, like, oh man, it's the holidays. Everyone might like a distraction. I was like, maybe if we put this up, it'll like be a video. Like, oh, have you seen that? And uh, I was like, and you know, it's Chris Farley and Eddie Vedder, my two faves. And so it's Eddie Vedder's birthday, December 23rd. And I was like, that would be cool if we put it here. And so yeah, we put it up, and then it got on the uh, front page of YouTube, which was like, that was the holy grail of you know what to get at that time and and jack black saw it and said he wanted to be ben franklin okay well hold on jack black sees it how do you know jack black saw jeremy it? worked with jack that's black. right that's yeah, right jeremy okay was okay Jack's assistant yeah, okay and saw it and he's like jack wants to play ben franklin i'm like all right i guess we'll do it one more time but it was always that thing like i never thought of it as a show it was just like this will be a funny short because i don't want it to get old you know yeah yeah also it's it's hard to like you know, listen to a drunk person for more than five minutes. So it was a real evolution. I know we're really out of time. So. No, no, we're gonna, we're, we're good. Take we're good. Care. <laughs> okay, really. Okay, so when does it become a show? I know it, used, it started teasing again on an HBO show. HBO Ooh, show. LOL. Uh, yeah, LOL. How, and LOL was on for one season. You did drunk history on that, right? Mm -hmm. And some other mm -hmm. sketches. Mm -hmm. Okay that last and then what makes you how did how does this become its own show uh they uh well uh i started uh, people were asking networks were asking if i would ever turn it into a show and i was like i don't know how you would do that who's reaching and, out tell me a network give well, me a title like, uh, give FX, me a net. How, okay Central. they're reaching out how yeah. are they reaching out to you how? to my manager and okay. asking okay. like is there a show there blah 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 and then i started watching a lot of docu-series and stuff sorry i was like well i just don't know how it would be a show or if there's like it's just drunk people telling stories and then it being reenacted like what's the through line so i started thinking and i would really love to go across the country so the pilot was um me saying at 30 years old i realized i don't know anything about my country so i rented a short bus and i'm driving across america to find out what happened so, yeah, the pilot was me driving, like, this short bus yeah. to different towns. I don't and remember the short bus. And then it was a Comedy Central, 
Comedy Central note, which is great, which is like, let's not make this your journey, let's make this everybody's. So it was, it was good. And then I was like, all right, this will last for a season. Did you really think it only lasts for one yeah. season? And now you're on the sixth season? Yeah. That's crazy, Derek. Yeah, that's crazy. How many episodes all together? I think, well, not including the online, but TV, I think 72. 72, and how many other countries are doing it on their own thing? I think 10. 10 other countries. There's yeah. there's nine, there's 10 other Derek Waters out there. It's not you. I don't you. think they have a host. I think it's just like, it's just the camera and the narrator. Really? Yeah. Do you get yeah. a little? Do you get a little kickback from that? Just sure. a little. Okay. All right. Derek. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Don't forget Bitcoin. When are you gonna start going to do ads? Uh, next week. Okay. Good. No. Okay, Derek. You gotta ask for some Starbucks money. I did. I know, man. man. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, Derek. <laughs> six up six years. Um, what have What have you learned through all of this? What no. do you want to do? What What's next? I mean, you've accomplished something big in Hollywood. You've created your own content, which everyone is trying to do now. Literally, everyone is trying to do what you did, because it was homegrown. Yeah. Which was fantastic. What is next for Derek Waters? Do you want to continue this, or is there going to be like Drunk History presents other things? Like, mm. what are you What are you kind of thinking? You don't have to share it, but. Well, then I wouldn't be answering the question. Well, I know it, but I don't know if I'm revealing something. <laughs> no, I'm not no, supposed to reveal. no, it's fine. I want to, I want to do, I love the show, but it's, it's, it's not something that I'm going to go to my grave going like, oh, I did that. I want to do more. I, I still you. have drive and I would love to start a production company and get producing more stuff. And, you know, I would like to be acting more. I miss acting. I love directing, but. I also, acting is always my passion. You know? Derek, I watched you direct a couple of times, and it looks like you're having the best time ever when That's you're so directing. I love it so much. That that must be a fun feeling, knowing, and then you also, you have at your fingertips, talent, uh, loads of talented people wanting to be a part of this project. Yeah. I'm truly, truly blessed. I, 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 I don't know how it happened. I mean, I know, like, the road, but... It, it's also one of those things where you don't know how long it's gonna last. You know, I always say like, don't ever forget the sound of a headshot being stable to the resume. Amen, brother. Amen. That sound can happen at any time, and if whenever you like lay lay back and be like, oh yeah, I got this, you're gonna fall. Yeah. You know, like, um, yeah, but yeah, it's, I don't know what to say. All right, Derek. I'm a lucky man, and I love you, Paul. I love you, brother. Wait, just two last questions, and we're done. Worst days in Hollywood, which one, where were they? Where were they? Yeah. Have remember, you had them yet? I remember a moment that really still stings was I was doing a big job and I was very young and I was in front of a live studio audience and I kept messing up a line. Yeah. And the actor goes, that I was doing it with, goes, seriously, Derek, how did you get here? Did you win a contest or something? <laughs> You laughing because <laughs> that's pretty funny. Who said that? I'm not gonna reveal. I think I remember this. It was a name though, right? It was yeah. somebody. Yeah. But I said, yeah, I did win a contest. Did you really say that? Yeah. Okay. Well, but the audience laughed. But and I still can't remember the damn line. <laughs> I remember being here, farmers market, when I was like 20, 21, and someone asked me if I would do a question for Seventeen Magazine okay. right around here and I, I they asked me if I, I forget I, sorry I just remembered getting asked by Seventeen Magazine if I would take a questionnaire here that wasn't oh hey okay, here it is sorry uh, for money we did central casting and I was an extra on the show I don't remember the name of it but it was a basic scene just walking in the background you know this is fun and it was more like we were like in that kind of side like no i want to see what what does that person do what does that person do and i'm just on a set this is cool at paramount and uh this you know there's always a buddy who wants to be your friend like hey man what kind of car do you have <laughs> they're looking for cars oh i don't want to drive i just i just i'm preferred walking yeah well, what kind of car do you have i have a black pontiac grand oh he's got a black car <laughs> black car <laughs> And they're like, great, pull it around. And he's like, 15 extra dollars. I was like, oh, great, son of a bitch. And you know me, I'm real nervous about everything. And so I get up to the front of Paramount, and I forgot the name of the show then and now. 
and uh, I was like, I'm, I was just back there, I forget uh, the name of the show, and then I showed them this pass, and they're like, okay, go through, and I was so nervous that I ran into, like, the Paramount sign. Yeah. Like, the, the so my side mirror, like, oh. broke, and all the glass was all over the place, and I was like, oh, no, like, they're gonna kick me up. So I got out of the car and, like, cleaned it up, and the guy's like, hey, this sounds like Tommy Boy, but he really said, like, hey, you can't stand there. And then I was like, oh, sorry. He goes, Jesus, what happened to your face? And my whole face was covered in blood because all the, the window oh, had, like, Derek. shattered on me. And But I was so nervous. I didn't care. <laughs> blood dripping around, like, I don't want to get kicked out of here. I'm going to be blacklisted. And then they took me to the Paramount doctor, which was, like, a lady yawning, like, just, like, putting, like, dabs on my face, like... Yeah, I was here when they shot Pee Wee. <laughs> she said something like that. Anyway, Matt, I've had too many great days to think about the bad days. Okay, all right. Derek, I think we're going to shut it down now that the summer crowd is fully out yeah. here at Farmer's yeah. Market. Derek, thank you so much for doing this, thank my brother. I really you. appreciate it. I love these. This is so good. Derek. You're it, so good at well, it. Well, thank you, dude. And Derek, I am excited about your future out here, dude, because... Yes. You have always, you've always done something. And I know you will always do stuff. So I'm excited to watch what the next adventure is, which I know you're not done with this adventure, but you got other adventures ahead of yeah. you, which is what I'm excited about. Me too. And I'm excited about our next Super Bowl party. Me too. When, Derek, go ahead. When will it be? <laughs> Maybe when Super Bowl. We, when we figure out the time. Yeah. yeah. Derek, do me one last favor. Yeah. <clears throat> will you look right in there and tell everybody bye for me? Bye-bye.